<laughs> Evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. My name is Antonio Cruz Martinez. I was born out in Ogden, Utah. Yeah, I moved out to California when I was a little kid. I barely moved back about 10, 11 years ago and uh, lived in uh, New Mexico and Arizona for a while and uh, barely came back out here and uh, kind of developed like a sense for DJing a little bit here and there, so that's where I started DJing from. I, I was actually playing a video game, it was like Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and uh, I uh, saw like the tracks on there, like, you know, like Kirby Hancock, you know, all the stuff. I didn't, I didn't really know too much about hip hop, but you know, like, when I saw these tracks, you know, I, I really like, you know, liked the scratching and stuff, you know what I mean? I didn't know how it was done until I saw like a, a video of Grandmaster Flash at the VH1 Hip Hop Awards, and uh, he was scratching and cutting it up, and I really enjoyed that, so I thought I'd get into it. So I did like a uh, whole bunch of chores, saved a hundred dollars, and bought like a kind of a sketchy turntable set from Circuit City. That's kind of like how I started out, you know what I mean? Just rough, and then I'd buy records at the DI, and just mix like stupid stuff with stupid stuff. I, didn't, I really didn't know what I was looking for at all, because I didn't have that real sense of it, anything at all, you know what I mean? It was just me out there and out in Ogden where I live at, there's no hip hop scene, so <laughs> I just kind of felt like, you know, this this is the, you know, I, I can I can just do this and I can just feel at home with this, you know what I mean? And I can just be as creative as I want because there was nobody telling me what to do, nobody telling me like where to go with it. So it's just like I could just do whatever, you know, I could throw these records here, throw these records here. Well, when I grew up with my dad, I, I listened to like a lot of uh, Depeche Mode and Nine Inch Nails. My mom liked Nine Inch Nails a lot back in the 80s and stuff like that. And uh, I, uh, she had a copy of Pretty Hate Machine, so I kind of got into industrial 80s and electronica stuff. And um, I kind of uh, moved on to like uh, alternative, like Red Hot Chili Peppers. And uh, I like the uh, the uh, overseas stuff, um, Simon and Kipsky, Kifana. Uh, a lot of those people out there, you know, they, they really uh, they really make some cool stuff, so I listen to a lot of them. Uh, Mixed Master Mike, pretty good stuff there too, so it's kind of like a big influence. This is Electronic Battleship and you're watching Urban Media. There was a lot of stuff that was pretty crazy at the time when I started DJing. Uh, there was just, you know, I got locked up a lot. You know, I was being a little. I can't. I don't know if I can. Say. <laughs> I did a lot of stupid things as a kid, and um, you know, that kind of blocked me a lot. You know what I mean? And people tell me I couldn't do it. People tell me this and that. You know. Um, nowadays, it seems like there's a lot of DJs. There's a lot of dope DJs, but there's a lot of DJs that kind of like. Just, you know, they just know everything, you know what I mean? You kind of got to keep quiet around them because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if you upset them, then they're going to tell you how to DJ. But I kind of like to look around and like take everything in perspective, kind of listen, you know, and uh, usually I keep things pretty low key between me and other DJs. I don't really have too much of a fan base. I, I do kind of. It's not, it's not uh, what you think it is. It's just that when I would do a show, like I'd go out to Ogden and I'd go try to do a show at Mojo's and I would get turned down, but then like another gig would open up that was better, you know what I mean? Or like I'd go try to do one of these gigs over here, like apply for a job at like a club, you know, and I'd get turned down, and then a bigger gig would, sh would end up, you know what I mean? So off that, like I started, you know, meeting uh, people like Josh and Corey and Miguel and stuff like that, and they started hooking me up with gigs and stuff, and then from then on out, you know what I mean? So ever since then, it's just been like, you know, crazy stuff, and it went all the way up to Bone Thugs and Harmony, and then just like, 
really cool stuff, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I didn't know where I was at as a DJ, like, because I lived in Ogden and, you know, I didn't know, you know, what Salt Lake had in store for me. So, <laughs> I remember, like, the, f the first B-Boy Jam I showed up with, I played, like, a whole bunch of 80s music. You know, they danced to it, but, you know, afterwards they were like, I stopped fly, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I kind of uh, felt like there was more responsibility to DJing. So, it seems like, you know, I had more room to grow. You know I mean? Had, there's a lot more. So, it's good that it keeps me interested. I don't even know. Um, I would think uh, more gigs, more playing, more shows, stuff like that, you know. Cool stuff, you know, whatever, I don't care. Um, DJing is kind of, I, I could go back to like where I was at before, like in my room just DJing, and I'd, I'd be pretty happy about it, you know what I mean? Let's see, Synchronized, Jurassic Tactics, uh, Lexus Kane, um, Ramadan, and uh, Rudy. Uh, let's see, Ian Brox, Ryan High, um, my, my parents, um, <laughs> uh, everybody in Ogden, uh, my friend Justin, Mike, that's all I can think of. <laughs> oh yeah, the crate dwellers, yeah, they're pretty cool too. <laughs> out here um, like there's like a lot of stuff that you can take from a lot of stuff that you can I don't know what I'm talking about anymore <laughs> <laughs>